Diane Keaton was born Diane Hall in Los Angeles in 1946, but she changed her surname to Keaton after her birth name had already been registered with the Actors Guild by another actress. Now, to confuse matters even further, her nickname is Annie, and it was her role as Annie Hall in the movie with the same name that won her her first Oscar. Now, she's played plenty of dramatic roles, but it's always been comedy that she's known for. She can do Lucille Ball did. She's sort of our Lucy in a way. You know, she can do very heightened physical comedy and make it so real and so relatable. And I don't think many actresses have that gift. Growing up as a child, Diane was inspired to become a stage actor when her mum was crowned Miss Los Angeles at a pageant for homemakers. It was the theatricality of the event that inspired her. She went on to study the Meisner technique, an ensemble acting technique made popular by Sanford Meisner. And her inspiration for playing strong, independent women came from Katharine Hepburn. To me, um, the way she lived her life uh, represented the kind of person that I would like to aspire to be when I was older. In 1968, Diane became a member of the original cast of the Broadway musical Hair. For the cast, nudity was optional, although it did earn you an extra $50 a night. Diane refused. After doing Hair for nine months, she auditioned for a part in Woody Allen's production of Play It Again, Sam. She was nearly passed over for being too tall, but in the end she won the part and was nominated for a Tony Award for her performance. Diane makes you want to raise your game. You do raise your game. It's sort of just an automatic thing. Like, I, I think she's one of those actors that brings out the best in everyone that she's in a scene with. So, I, I mean, I just have the most marvelous time and it's fun to learn more about yourself as an actor and as a person, not to sound like cliche or cheesy, but she just brings out like those great elements of yourself and especially, obviously, as an actor working on a film with her that you just didn't really know about yourself. In the early days, Keaton was commonly referred to as the kooky actress. She had a vulnerability and nervousness in her performances, and it was those qualities that won her the role of Kay Andrews, the girlfriend of Michael Corleone, played by Al Pacino, in Francis Ford Coppola's 1972 blockbuster, The Godfather. Her performance made this her breakthrough role. I've always had the good fortune to have somebody appreciate me, like Woody or Nancy, and those people I've, I've had the honor to work with in several movies, and they seem to think that you know, I speak their words the way they want them or they want eccentrics, I don't know. Her working life and love life have often overlapped. Keaton became romantically linked with Al Pacino during the Godfather trilogy. Her most notable relationship, however, was with Woody Allen. Together they made eight films between 1971 and 1993. Their romance didn't last the test of time, but their friendship has. She played an array of eccentric characters in his comic and dramatic films, including Sleeper, Love and Death, Interiors, Manhattan, and the film version of Play It Again, Sam. Is there such thing as a Diane Keaton role, a Diane Keaton movie? If there is such a thing, I don't think there really is such a thing. It's not like they're that big a star where they sort of, oh yes, let's do this, let's do a movie about her. In 1977, Keaton and Allen starred in the romantic comedy Annie Hall. In 2006, Premier Magazine ranked Keaton's performance the 60th greatest performance of all time. The film was written and directed by Woody Allen, and the pair played on-again, off-again lovers living in New York City. The film, which mimicked their own lives, was a huge success, both financially and critically, winning the Oscar for Best Picture and Best Actress. Keaton was not only famous for her eccentric characters, but also her eccentric fashion. Her unisex look consisted of vintage men's clothing, baggy pants, neckties, vests, fedora hats. Now, many of the clothes she wore in Annie Hall actually came out of her own wardrobe, and after the success of the film, she became a fashion icon of the late 70s. Now, there was a fashion critic at the time, Mr Blackwell, and she frequently made his worst dressed list. In fact, five times in total. I feel that I'm just a little left of center. Yeah, I've always been a little left of center. Another major chapter in Diane Keaton's life involved Warren Beatty. Warren cast her in his film, Reds. For similar reasons, she'd been Woody Allen's muse. He saw in Annie Hall what he wanted, a natural nervousness and insecure attitude for the role of bohemian female journalist, Louise Bryant. 
For her performance, she received nominations for the Academy Award and the Golden Globe. Keaton and Beatty also began a relationship, which made for tabloid gold. Keaton was very uneasy with the attention, and it resulted in her avoiding the spotlight. So much so that in 1985, Vanity Fair magazine described her as the most reclusive star since Garbo. The pair broke up shortly after filming finished, but remained close friends. Which is, you know, all of us, like, who doesn't identify with that? I mean, everybody identifies with the fact that they failed in romance. I, and I mean, many times all of us have to go through a lot of trials, or in my case, you just fail, permanently fail in romance. In 1987, she starred in her first major mainstream release, Baby Boom, as a Manhattan career woman who's suddenly forced to care for a toddler. By the 90s, and now middle-aged, she shifted to more mature roles, like in Father of the Bride, alongside Steve Martin. Father of the Bride was Keaton's first major hit after four years of commercial disappointments, and it led to a sequel. In 1996, Keaton played a woman with leukaemia in Marvin's Room. Her performance earned her a third Academy Award nomination. In the same year, she starred in another film, a film that began a new chapter in her career, that as a role model for women over 50. The film was the first Wives Club, and she starred alongside Goldie Hawn and Bette Midler as a trio of women whose husbands had divorced them for younger ladies. It was a huge success, and it began a cult following among middle-aged women. I think there's just so few of us that are over 50 who are kind of around. Like, there's Meryl, there's Goldie, there's me, there's, what, Sigourney Weaver, Jamie Lee Curtis. There's a few of us around. I feel a responsibility that I am lucky enough to be here, like, acting in movies. In fact, Keaton sings at the end of the movie. Now, perhaps her career beginning as a member of the musical Hair should have given us a hint, but it turns out singing was always a dream. In 1977, she actually began recording tracks for a solo album, but the finished record never materialised. I thought I was going to be a musical comedy star. I did. My whole dream in life when I was growing up was, you know, Barbara Streisand, and I tried being a singer. I did a nightclub act. It was horrible. I did a nightclub act. It was so sad. And? How long did well, it last? Well, guess what? It didn't last long. <laughs> In 1996, Keaton claimed she would never direct herself in a film, claiming that as a director you automatically have different goals. I can't think about directing when I'm acting. However, in 2000, she directed and starred in Hanging Up with Meg Ryan and Lisa Kudrow. In recent years, she's continued playing maternal characters in The Family Stone with Sarah Jessica Parker and Because I Said So with Mandy Moore. I think that you always bring what you've experienced in your life into the roles that you play. So it was easily, on that level, I, it, she was easily identifiable to me. Her name had been mentioned, and I read the script, and I felt this would be a great vehicle for her. It was clear. It was clear from the way the script was conceived and the way the character was written that it, it kind of worked for the cadence of her voice. It worked for the kind of humor she does well. And Jesse had told me, because Jesse had a, a relationship with Diane, I knew Diane a little bit myself, Jesse told me that Diane was interested in going for physical comedy, playing a character with a, with a sort of more fun kind of physicality than she had in recent years. One of the biggest films of Diane Keaton's career almost didn't get made. Something's Gotta Give was directed by Nancy Myers and co-starred Jack Nicholson in a romantic comedy. The film's original studio allegedly declined to produce the film because they thought stars aged 63 and 57 were too old to be bankable. Well, the film was a success and Keaton was nominated for an Oscar and won a Golden Globe. I think it's a significant honour because of the content, like I said in my speech, <laughs> of, of Nancy's movie. I mean, I, I think that Nancy's movie, you know, represents the fact that people over 50 still have, you know, sexual impulses <laughs> and that love is possible among the elderly. <laughs> this was the second Golden Globe win since Annie Hall, almost 30 years prior. And for this elderly actress, even sweeter. Well, of course, it's, it's poignant. I mean, of course, it means more to me than the last time, much more, because I, I just feel like uh, an, an advocate of the, uh, 
you know, of the fact that, like I said before, the fact that older people are still around, they can be funny if they have good material, and they can, uh, you know, they can be in love. Way back when she was starting out in hair, she refused to perform nude. Then, in Something's Gotta Give, she had a nude scene. So, will she ever do it again? Oh, always. I'm always going to do nudity. I'm, I'm going to insist on it in all my contracts. Diane? In an incredible career, Diane Keaton has been a comedic groundbreaker, a style icon, a muse, a recluse, a photographer, a real estate developer, an Oscar winner, and a middle-aged romantic lead. It certainly has been an incredible career that's evolved and grown as time's gone by. Stay tuned to Star Picks for all the movies you know and the actors you love, broadcast in glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. It's altogether better on screen and at mnc.tv.